First Corinthians, chapter four, verse 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. What did Paul mean by, though we have 10,000 instructors in Christ? We have not many fathers. Do you realize that this was the early beginning of the revealing of the mystery of the monarch Christ being our spirits? He goes on to say that this day have I begotten him. What was he saying? Was he saying that he was this one father that had begotten them? Questions I have asked our father about would him answer me, and now I'm only sharing his answers to you. Paul was not claiming to be their father, as we see some throughout human history claiming. He wasn't saying that he was our holy father. We only have one father, and as Jesus has warned us to call no man your father, because you already have one, unaware. This was being stressed by Paul. I have dared to share what this minor Christ through Paul was proclaiming, saying the same with this minor Christ in my spirit, that we always had a father, and that this father was not the father of our flesh, secular or religious ideas of a father. Imagine, in that day, in the early beginning of this reviewing of this mystery, There were only something like 10,000 instructors that even understood to some degree this matter of all having this minor Christ in their spirits. We see the debates in the early church of Corinth where this text is found. Can you imagine today, some 2,000 years of this mystery being revealed, that there might be billions who have, to some degree or another, embraced this minor Christ being in them. If in the beginning this mystery was distorted, can you imagine its distortion after 2,000 years? That's what today those with this modifies in their spirit are up against. An overwhelming heap of teachers that Paul also warned us about that would be in the end times. Here's that text it's in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, so they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. I won't expound upon it here, I've done it in other videos. It really gets deep. It shows you the source that's going on today. So continuing on my notes here. Just proclaim what I've been saying, posting here on YouTube. Just attempt to weed through all the preachers and teachers, getting them to all agree that all have the same Father. Them proclaiming, as Paul proclaimed in Acts 17, that even those around us, which we might call unbelievers or sinners, also have the same Father, sadly being unaware of this eternal fact. Just claim this and watch the tax you get being labeled with some cult that has without doubt distorted this mystery. You will be called, among many labels, a universalist, an inclusive, a gnostic, and labels you may have never heard of. I have weathered this through the 15 years that I dared to share some of this good news, Paul called the gospel, that our father shared to me over my lifetime and will continue to share as long as I have breath. I was unaware of this message myself years ago, and when I heard this, I had thought that this wasn't right. I fought it back then, as I now see some fighting it. Nothing today could change what I have come to believe. Paul said it in this way, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Join the club. 
Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. He tried to shame you, saying you are going away from the faith. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You'll see him express this over and over in his letters. Here's a few examples. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. For through him, who? Jesus. And what it accomplished? We both, hear that, have access by one spirit unto the Father. What's he saying there? His spirit bears witness to our spirit that we are God's offspring. Read this in Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. See there? Our spirit. It's in that chapter 8 that the word spirit is mentioned 19 times. And people get confused by talking about the Holy Spirit or the human. It's, it's both. The human spirit is partnership with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that first that we are the children of God. Now people try to shoot this down. Not everybody's the children of God. They at first that will throw this at. They'll throw at you. They'll use this text. Claim that not all are children of God. One word in the text shoots them down. Here's that one word. Read Romans chapter 9, verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. See that word? These are not the children of God. They're not aware of it. They're being distracted by the flesh. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Children of the flesh? I got a whole bunch of videos on just what this thing of the flesh is. Those who hang on to some particular race, culture, secular, or religious creed, or gender. Remember Jesus saying, he did seek to save this life, that's this life. He'll lose who they really are in their spirits. You hear Paul once again bring this out in the following text. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be this in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? All human spirits, everyone's got a human spirit, we're spirit, soul, and body, unaware to the fact of our spirit and the mind of Christ in that spirit. God is the Father of the human spirit. I'm not talking about the spirits of this world or some demon. It's the human spirit. Going on, Paul reveals the following. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. Give none offense either to the Jew, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Three distinct expressions. This church, this called out summons, called the ecclesia, made of, of Jew and Gentiles, were to be stewards of this mercy of all being the offspring of God unaware. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as ministers of Christ. Now, this is the modern Christ he's talking about in our human spirit, and stewards of this mystery of God, more of is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or a man's judgment, yea, I judge not my own self. They'll judge you for this, saying this, right? You gotta be found faithful. What's it mean to be found faithful? To just live by faith. And you gotta go off and explain in that. And this matter of faith is the sort of things you all hope for, the evidence of things not seen. What's that? You're the offspring of God, unaware. And you gotta be found faithful, and then you're letting people know that. You're not trying to produce some particular denomination, and your view is slant. Because you're heaped up teachers. Romans, chapter 10, verse 12. For there is no difference, here it is, no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, 
sacro religious world. There's no difference between the Jew and the, and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Let's continue with Paul's writings. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Jew and Gentile. Philema, chapter 1, verse 25. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. To get the carnal mind, get into this minor crisis in your spirit. You would understand this. So in conclusion, with this short video, that gives you some idea of what comes out in my other videos. I read a long length, many videos. About these 10,000 instructors in Christ. Each one predict, having some idea. Fathers of our flesh. Fathers of our faith. And you got one father. Father of our nation. We're not talking about the fathers of our flesh. We're talking about the father of our spirit. Wouldn't it be much better to follow the father of your spirit and live? So consider what's been shared here. Go off, ask your father. He'll talk to you. He'll share everything I've just shared. God bless you all. Amen.